Uh, this is a demonstration that people often do to uh, try to show endothermic reactions. And it's uh, fairly common. I will have a little twist in terms of what I use it for, in terms of how I explain things with it. We have hydrated barium hydroxide, and we have ammonium thiocyanate. And these are both solids. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to combine the two solids, and we're going to see what reaction we get. Now, because it's I'm going to tell you in advance, something you shouldn't tell your students. Because it's endothermic, I'm going to end up placing it on a uh, piece of cardboard here that I'm going to wet. Hopefully it didn't wet too much. We'll find out. And we dump the two solids together. The other thing that's interesting about this is a lot of times, sticking a little bit, Won't matter because the reaction won't have really started much. And I want to get a little more in there. There we go. Okay. The uh, reaction needs a little agitation. So we're going to agitate it. And when you do this, things start happening. You start noticing that it sort of becomes uh, watery here. A little sort of uh, slushy water seems to. The other thing that happens is that you can see on the surface of the flask that there's condensation occurring. That's like wintertime. The flask is getting cold. Now I'm going to set it on my piece of cardboard. It's obviously quite cold. The other thing about it is when I opened that, I could tell one of the products. There was a product there. and. You can end up having kids or so find out about the product, but you have to wave it toward your nose, and they will recognize the product as ammonia. So ammonia was a product of this. Now, if it's cold enough, you can end up lifting it up. It has frozen the water to the cardboard. People do this with wooden blocks, but that's often is not quite as successful as using cardboard. Cardboard doesn't have as much mass, and it's also very easy to just grab a piece of cardboard and cut it up and use it for this. So this is a nice reaction to show something is endothermic. But let's go a little bit farther. Why are reactions endothermic? Now, there are various reasons, but one of the things that we teach people about is bond breaking and bond making. If I have a bond to get the material apart, I have to break the bond. To break a bond, I have to put in energy. So it takes energy to break a bond. And conversely, although not as obvious in one's mind, when bonds are made, energy is released. So what I would like to do is count the bonds here that were broken, and count the bonds that are made. So let's go to the blackboard. I have my two chemicals. There is barium hydroxide hydrated with eight waters on it. And it reacted with ammonium thiocyanate both of these were solids to start with, and we produced a product. The product that we produced, we could smell one of them. That's ammonia. So we have ammonia, which is a gas, and we can tell that there's a precipitate in there. The precipitate has to, is barium thiocyanate. So that would be BASCN2, and we have one other product because we had the thing become wet and solution, we had water. So we have a product of water. Now we need to balance our equation. One molecule would make one molecule. 
But that means we had two here. That means we have two here. And now we've got to figure out how many waters we have. We have eight here, and OHs went with H pluses from the ammonium ion to make water, and there were two of those. So there's eight plus two, ten waters. Okay. So now, let's figure out the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are made. A purist would probably be a little upset with me because I am leaving out a lot of things in an involved situation. But in first year class where I'm trying to get across the point about bond breaking and bond making, this works pretty good. So well, let's see, what must have happened? So in a classroom I would be asking the kids, what got broken? Where, where's, where are things apart? Well, obviously I had to take eight waters off of this thing. So, the barium hydroxide with eight waters had to have eight bonds that were broken for the waters coming off. Okay. So I broke those. What other bonds had to be broken? Well, I had to get OHs off of this barium. And there are two of them and they would be on opposite sides of it. So the barium hydroxide would have broken. Maybe I can do something like this. That would have broken off. These would have broken off. And there would be two bonds. So that is two bonds that are broken. Now, the NH4, SCN, would have broken in ions from the NH4 and the SCN part. There are two of those molecules, so I must have broken two of these. So I have two bonds there. Okay, and now the NH4 had to lose H's so that I could make my two waters here. So the NH4 plus had to lose one of those H's. Don't know how I'm quite going to show that. One of those H's came off, and that happened twice. So there are two bonds here. So let's count the bonds that I claim are broken. Eight and two and two and two make 14 bonds. 14 bonds are broken. Let's look at the bonds made. Okay, the ammonia. Well, that was a remains after the H plus came off. So there's no bonds made there. The barium thiocyanate. Well, there are two of those. They would have been on opposite sides of the barium after they combined. So there'd be two bonds. So the barium thiocyanate would break and we'd get two bonds. I'm sorry, didn't break, got made. Two bonds got made when this got made. We got ten waters. Eight of them were originally in water form. But there were two waters that were formed because the H plus went with the OH minuses. So here would be two bonds. So here would be four bonds that were made. Again, this is a very simplified Explanation doesn't take into account a whole bunch of other factors. Doesn't take into account the strength of bonds. It doesn't take into account the entropy changes that are occurring. But in my purpose when we end up doing this is I'm trying to get kids to get, be very sure about bonds that are broken and bonds that are made. And in this case, we end up breaking a lot more than we made, that took energy and the reaction was very cold.